All right, let's start out with um, <clears throat> looking at these special limits. So we have three limits that we're just gonna kind of take for granted and use whenever they come up. <clears throat> so the first one, uh, the limit is x approaches zero of sine x over x. That is gonna equal one. The key thing with this one, and actually the next one too, is that these special limits are gonna apply when the angle and the denominator match. So on this one, if it was sine two x over two x, that would equal one. If it was sine of four x over four x, that would also equal one. <clears throat> For the second one, the same would have to follow here. These two guys have to match up. There also has to be the one and the minus in it. Uh, this one we saw in the first uh, video, I think, or at least the first section we did. Um, and we showed it with a table and that was equal to zero. The third one doesn't come up too often. You'll probably see it in a later calculus class. Um, this limit is gonna equal the number E. So we're gonna actually prove this first one out and not with the table, like actually work through it. Uh, but to do so, we're gonna need what's called the squeeze theorem. So the squeeze theorem just says, okay, if you've got three functions and they're ordered like this, then if you take the limit of the smallest one and the limit of the biggest one, and they equal the same thing, then the one in the middle, when you take the limit of that guy, you should also be, it should also come out the same. Because <clears throat> if the small one and the big one are the same, then the middle one has to be as well. Okay, so we're gonna use this theorem uh, to prove out uh, that first one up there. So we gotta look at some areas and kind of set them up and compare them. So we're gonna look at the areas of the two triangles in the sector from this uh, figure. So we have two triangles, we have a big one, and then we've got the smaller one. And then we have this sector area, that pie slice. So we're gonna order uh, the areas up. Oh. And this side here, like the one, that goes all the way from the center all the way out to the edge of the circle. So this is the unit circle. So that makes just this side of the triangle, the small one, just that side is blue. The big triangle, the whole base is one. So in comparing the areas, the big triangle is the biggest, so that's one half times um, base times height. The sector area would be the next one. It's just theta over two. And then the smaller triangle is the smallest area. So that would be one half times the base times the height. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna multiply everything in there by two over sine of theta, which I know you're going, what? Why would we do that? Well, keep in mind, we're trying to get to this. We don't have this in here. So I'm doing this so I can hopefully come out with something that looks like that. So I'm gonna multiply this to each of these. So on the first one, you know, the twos cancel out. Um, the tangent times one over sine, I'd be left with one over cosine of theta. In the middle, the twos cancel, but the theta is still on top, and then the sine of theta would be underneath. Hey, that looks kind of like what we're trying to get to, right? It's just upside down. Well, let's keep going with it and see what happens. So then if I multiply it to this next one, the twos are gone, the sines are gone, and the cosine of theta is the only thing left. Well, since it's close, it's just upside down. Let's take its reciprocal and flip it around so that it's right side up. Well, if I take the reciprocal of the middle one, I've got to take the reciprocals of the others. So the left side is now cosine and the right side is a one over cosine. 
And when you take the reciprocal with inequalities, they turn around and they change the directions. And if you don't believe me, like, wait, why does that happen? Just look at numbers. Like, look at two and three. Well, the three is bigger than two, right? Well, if you take the reciprocal, which one is bigger now? The half. So anytime you take the reciprocal of an inequality, your inequality turns around and changes directions. All right. So now we have that fraction that we were trying to head towards. So the only thing left to do is to slap a limit on it. So we're going to take the limit as theta approaches zero of everything. So the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine of theta is less than or equal to the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta. It's less than or equal to the limit as theta goes to zero of one over cosine of theta. So I can't do anything with this middle one. That's what I'm trying to prove. But I can do something with the outer ones. I can plug in the zero for theta. Because what's cosine of zero? One. So one is less than or equal to the limit. As theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta. It's less than or equal to one over one is also one. So right here, this is where that squeeze theorem is coming into play. You're saying that this thing is bigger than one and smaller than one. Well, then it would have to equal one. And there is your proof. So we'll stop it here. On the next video, we'll see how to use these special limits when you come across them uh, in problems.